Hello guys, welcome to KP classes. My name is Virendra and today we are here to talk about basics of crystallography. Okay, I have taken one live session of crystallography earlier also. There we have discussed about what I teach in crystallography step by step. Okay, I have told you about the topics. Okay, then afterwards I started with the definition portion that was of your mineral definition. There I try to explain each and every aspect of the definition of mineral. I hope you guys have liked that, that lecture. Okay. Okay. So today <clears throat> I am going to move forward and talk about few more things. Okay. The first thing we are going to talk about is the types of crystals which we see in nature. Okay. So the first topic we are going to study today is the types of crystals. Here we are having a classification based on the size of the crystals as well as their arrangement also. Okay. Now here the first type of the crystals are is micro crystalline. The first is micro crystalline as the name suggests here micro word is used means that here we will be talking about only those micro uh, those micro crystals which cannot be seen by the naked eyes okay so we will be seeing here those crystals which cannot be seen by the naked eyes by naked eyes i mean to say that here <clears throat> how do we see things we see things only when a light is falling and that object and that light is getting reflected back and i am able to see that object only now here what is happening the particles are becoming so small that the lights falling on them is not getting reflected back so if the light is not getting reflected back then how i am going to see that okay so i am not able to see these types of crystals okay these are considered as micro crystallines now here the easiest way when the size is decreasing the easiest way to see them is that we start using microscopes so micro crystallines are the those crystals which are observed under microscope they are observed under microscope okay now if so here in microscope which light we use we use normal visible light okay we are only using visible light okay now if the size is more increasing decreasing sorry if the size is getting decreased more a time will come when the visible light won't be able to show us anything okay we need more shorter wavelength okay then the another type of a crystals comes into existence which are known as crypto crystalline crypto crystallines okay these are those crystals okay so these are those crystals which cannot be observed under the optical microscope because they need more shorter wavelength to under to see them okay now here we see use usually xrd okay we do xrd so then only we can know about the structures okay. here what is happening ordering is so small ordering is so small that they cannot be studied they cannot be studied under normal microscope
microscope. So here we use XRD to understand the structure of a crystal. Okay. So this is a second type of a crystal. Then the third type we will be talking about the larger one. It is known as mega crystalline objects. Mega crystallines. The, the crystals are very large and we cannot can see them easily there is nothing to explain much also here then the next part is polycrystalline polycrystalline mega if we talk you want to talk about mega mega is when the crystals are clearly visible to us then we say it is a mega crystalline okay then the last one here is polycrystalline Polycrystalline is those objects, sometimes what happen, we in a particular object, there is a particular arrangement of atoms, okay. Now, the, these sometimes you will see that the object is there, but at different places, it is having a different type of a arrangement, okay. So, then we term it as a polycrystalline, okay. So, at different places, at different places it has different arrangement okay so these are the types of the crystals which we study this is just i am uh, talking about under crystalline objects crystalline objects are those objects which are having a particular definite ordering in them then we were we studied about amorphous also in the previous class which do not have any particular definite ordering in between them okay now here i have been talking about arrangement and everything okay so let's try to explain that okay i am saying that atoms uh, are placed at a certain point then the space between them then they are giving rise to a structure okay so let's try to study them okay so next topic which i am going to teach is motifs and lattice okay. so first let's talk about motifs now how i was drawing the structures i am taking dots like this like this like this okay here i am drawing it in 2d then i am saying that connect these dots okay this kind of a structures these dots can be connected like this okay this kind of a structure is there okay now what are these dots <coughs> what are these dots these dots here are your they can be your atoms they can be your molecules they can be your ions present okay so in an object motifs what are motifs motifs are basically your objects these are the objects now at these corners we are having objects present and they are joined together and they are giving rise to a particular type of a structure a different arrangement of these objects is present now what kind of a object it can be it can be your atoms molecules ions okay so motifs motifs are your objects okay and they can be your atoms molecules or ions now they are arranged now the way in which they are arranged is your lattice okay so lattice is your arrangement here in this diagram i have drawn it in two dimensional but if you see all the crystals which in present in nature they are in three dimensional so here i can say it is not wrong to say that lattice are 3d arrangement of constituent particles i can show you a 3d diagram also okay so lattice motifs will be present at these corners I have taken a simplest structure, 
so these are the motive points okay so how do we define lattice how these motifs are arranged in three dimensional space okay now i have tried to represent that diagrammatically also so here the motifs are always in our crystallography point represented as a point okay so we are always going to represent motifs as a points which are present at the corners someone is saying something Okay. <clears throat> now what i can say the arrangement lattice what is a lattice it is a three dimensional arrangement it is a three dimensional arrangement of constituent particles simple now these constituent particles can be your atoms molecules or ions okay and these constituent particles will be represented as the dots in the 3d structure okay i hope till now this is clear that what is a motif what is a lattice okay now the because why i have told you about lattice because i have to teach you about a unit cell okay from unit cell a different types of a crystals gets formed okay now let's talk about unit cell okay what is a unit cell so uh, you guys might have seen construction work going on okay so in construction work what do you guys see is that a person is having a layer of bricks okay he is having a bricks and he keep on ar arranging those bricks okay like that suppose we are having bricks like this why am i having bricks like this okay so what does he do he starts arranging them like this okay he starts arranging the bricks like this and start making walls similarly okay. like this he makes similarly what will happen at top of it he place another layer okay so like this he keep on building it okay but initially what he was having he was having only this brick with him okay with this brick he has prepared this shape okay cut regular stacking of a similar kind of a structure he has given this kind of a shape now one thing you should always notice here that this brick here in 2d it is a rectangular shape okay let's talk in 2d only i'm not, not go went into not go into 3d shapes here in 2d if you see this is rectangle and in 3d it is a cuboidal okay in 3d it is a cuboidal in 2d it is a rectangle now this is my unit which has successfully repeated and formed this layer it can be many stacks also but how many layers or uh, whatever the stacks is going to make the shape of the final layer is always going to be rectangle if you observe it in two dimensional it is going to be two rectangle or if you are observing it in two in three dimensional it is going to be cuboidal shape okay so from here we can conclude that the shape of the final structure which is going to form is dependent upon the initial unit structure okay this is known as unit structure why it is known as unit structure because it is getting repeated again and again in different directions to give rise to a complete form the structure you are observing okay so the shape is dependent upon the initial structure of the 
unit cell okay so this is an example of a making of a wall i have given why i have given because the crystals are also going to crystallize in a same manner they are, they need a smaller unit cell first then the unit cell is going to repeat itself again and again in every direction is it is going to repeat itself it is not like that it is going to uh, multiply uh, we have to keep next unit cell in the x direction only we can keep it in any direction minus x side y side also minus y side up below anywhere okay it is not like we do not know the, that the, this crystal was first or this crystal was first okay so it can grow in any direction but the shape of the final one is always going to be similar as to that as that of unit cell okay now this is an example which i have taken to explain now let's come to our unit cell okay we see crystals okay what we do we see crystals okay in crystals we are going to have motifs okay and number of motifs are there okay and uh, we see larger shape okay from that larger shape can we in deduce that its crystal shape is going to be like this only if we are having a crystal like this if we are having a large crystal like this okay we are having a large crystal this is of a cuboidal shape okay now from observing this can we say that it has been formed by n number of smaller units which is which are of same shape okay it is not wrong to say okay so i can start making this like this here so i am not going to complete all but just i am representing how it is present okay so can we say these are the unit cells which are repeating themselves okay this is the larger crystal which we are seeing so what is a unit cell it is a smallest portion of the crystal let is which is getting repeated in different directions so unit cells is a smallest portion of crystal lattice which is getting repeated in every direction this is my unit cell i hope this is clear to you guys now now i have already told you that the shape of the crystal is always identical not always there are some defects always but this works most of the times okay now the shape of the crystal shape of the crystal is dependent on the shape of <coughs> unit cells okay now in this unit cell okay if i am observing the larger one i will be saying that the motifs let's talk about motifs motifs are present here at the corners is it only these motifs is it going to have only these these this number of motifs but no it is having n number of these smaller units also they are also having motifs so 
it is going to have a very large number of motifs present in it why i am telling you because in the next topic i am going to teach something related to this relationship of motifs similarly we are going to have more unit cells inside them okay so all of them are going to have different different motifs okay i hope is it it is clear to you guys okay now let's take an example of a single unit cell see what's happening in that i am taking a single unit cell i am saying you to you guys that at the corners we are having motifs now i have also told you in the previous slide that a unit cell defines the shape of the crystal but i did tell you guys that there are some exceptions also sometimes because of some impurities and defects this shapes gets changed okay this thing i have told you okay now how this is getting changed let's talk about that okay now these are what are these here we are having motifs here can be atoms we can have here molecules we can here have ions anything can be present atoms molecules are ions okay now from this okay we know that atoms ions and whatever is present there they are having some kind of energy associated with them okay if the things are having energy associated with them these atoms are continuously vibrating they will be continuously vibrating okay they will they can vibrate in any direction let's say let's say it is vibrating like this Oh, sorry same color uh, let's take another color let's say this is vibrating in this direction it can vibrate in this direction so they are continuously vibrating okay now this vibration is of is having very high frequency so whenever you see a particular thing so let's say you are seeing your laptop at this time and the laptop is placed on a table okay table board and if you see the table it is having some corners okay and in between it is having a surface now when you touch it you see that it is a plane surface but you cannot see that the particles present here are always vibrating because they are having some kind of energy but why you can we uh, you are not able to see those particles answer is very simple because they are vibrating at a very high frequency because they are vibrating at a very high frequency so we are not able to see them okay so now when they are vibrating vibrations means that but that at some point of a time it is going to be present at this position then after some time it will be present at this position so this he will be moving in these positions okay so this vibration will lead to disorderness okay so at a point of a time it can be here or it can be here or it can be present in somewhere between okay that is going to be the case so this vibration leads to disorderness in the structure so what is happening they are vibrating vibrating at very high frequency this vibration will lead to disorderness and we term this it as a entropy denoted by symbol which you use for entropy is s so this is the reason of entropy this orderness in the crystals now you guys knows that here the vibration is happening and this vibration is happening because of some kind of energy okay now this entropy gets increased with the temperature why because when i am applying temperature or this temperature is getting re increased these atoms will be gaining more energy so they will be vibrating more so they will be vibrating more so as a result of that 
as a result of that there will be more disorderness okay so here can we say that the entropy is directly proportional to temperature we can say that temp temperature increases the entropy so both of them are directly proportional so the crystals which are at high temperature they are more subjected to have disorderness okay so the simplest type of the structures are going to get formed at low temperature okay now here you guys can see we are having an entropy and this entropy is controlled by temperature because they need energy they need kinetic energy that energy is getting uh, applied from by the temperature so this type of entropy is known as thermal entropy this is known as thermal entropy okay i hope this is clear okay because of all this what happens what is going to happen some kinds of the defects are going to get formed okay because of all this defects are going to get formed these motifs present here will be changing their shapes okay so we will be having defects here okay sometimes when suppose we were having a crystals we are having a crystal like this now we, it is having motifs present here it is having motifs present here now these motifs present here are gaining energy i am let's say i am raising its temperature okay now because of that earlier let's say they were vibrating okay let's say it is vibrating like this okay now i am increasing its energy as a result of that what is going to happen they are going to travel more distance vibration will be more okay now a time will come time will come when this motif will come at this place this will start taking its place this will start taking its place means they start interchanging their positions okay previously they were present at their only location okay now we have increased their temperature okay so what is happening here due to increase in temperature motifs are changing their position this is what is happening okay and why this is happening i think now you guys have gotten this idea ki because they are gaining more energy so they can shift places okay and this is very important for your chemical reactions now you guys might have read about all the chemical reactions like h plus h plus o2 is giving rise to h2o carbon is reacting with oxygen and forming carbon dioxide but how that is happening okay we say that electron is moving there okay it is sharing that bonding is there ionic bonding covalent bonding these types of things we have studied till now but you are not in class 10th or 12th okay so here you need to advance more so here this is responsible for chemical reactions okay and this type of entropy is known as configurational entropy what is the name this is known as configurational and entropy okay this is my configurational entropy now i think you guys have understood that how these motifs are going to shift places and i have told you that this these are important for chemical reactions now here i am i had one structure so i showed that now i will take an example i will tell you that how different structures are getting formed means that how chemical reactions are getting going on okay you need to understand this thing that how chemical reactions takes place look okay. till now we know that we have h positive ion and o negative then we have h positive 
plus O2 negative, they give rise to H2. I am not here worried about balancing because that is not required for me. Okay. So let's say we are having motifs or uh, unit cells of them like this. We are having unit cells of them like this. Now, H, <coughs> what will happen? The motif from one will get transferred to the another. Then only it becomes possible. Okay. So, previously in the previous diagram, I am saying, saying that, that this is moving like this. The motifs configuration and entropy like this. But it is not the case always. The motif will transfer from here to here. Here to here is also possible between the motifs, between the unit cells, the motifs are moving. Okay. So, if you want to take a real life example, you guys can say this is rhombic shape. So, we can say uh, this is cuboidal shape. Let us say talk about rhombic, we have a calcite and uh, SiO2. Okay. Calcite is also having rhombic unit cell and your uh, SiO2 quartz is also having rhombic unit cells. Okay. So, there Ca, CO3 plus SiO2 is present C A C O 3 this is S I O 2 okay when they react what do they form they form C A S I O 3 plus C O 2 okay how this is forming okay so what happens here this change happens here like this so this is the basics of reactions and unit cells okay now here we have to talk about bravis lattice also okay the next topic i am going to talk about is bravis lattice because this is required for explaining the crystal systems okay the very this is a very important topic that is your bravis lattice arrangement It is very important for you guys because sometimes direct questions are coming from this. Okay. What is Bravis lattice arrangement? See, I have I was telling you that uh, motifs are arranged in a particular unit in a particular way. Depending upon that, it is going to have different kind of a shape. But in nature, so how many shapes can be possible? So you guys will say that, sir, we cannot talk about the number of shapes. Okay, so there can be n number of shapes shapes present. Infinite number of different shapes can be present. But in nature, nature has simplified it for us. Okay, because depending upon the different stability conditions, uh, your energy conditions, there are only certain number of shapes which are stable. Okay, so we are going to talk about them. So only certain number of lattice arrangements are seen in nature. Okay, so crystal systems here we have will be talking about crystal systems and crystal families okay so before getting into brevis lattice arrangement we need to know about i think i should have told you about crystal structures first okay let's talk about first <coughs> these things crystal brevis lattice arrangements how many numbers are there okay so we are having a cubic system okay let's talk about crystal systems first okay before because that is connected to this one okay you won't be able to understand that bravis lattice structure first let's start about crystal system and families because when, while i teach bravis lattice arrangements then i have to use these crystal systems to explain Bravis lattice arrangements. Okay. So, first you need to be aware because this topic in your books, how it is given, it is given that this topic is given afterwards. Okay. But there they started talking about cubic and everything. So, you do not have any idea about that. I will think like that, that you are studying it for the first time. Okay. So, crystal set, crystal system and families. Suppose we are having a unit structure like this. Okay we are having a unit structure like this so can i represent here if you see this unit cell can be represented by three axes
this unit cell can be represented by three axes okay now this line can be present here at this point at this point see here at this point this is a 3d line okay now i have here this is my crystal now if you see this portion okay let me write their name this is b this is c and this is a axis this is a axis a axis a axis okay now in this crystal shape if you see this axis see the pen this is my b axis this is c axis and the behind one which is pointing towards me okay that is your a axis this thing you should always remember that what is my b axis b axis is our if you see correlated with your coordinate geometry b axis our here is x axis okay now your c axis is your y axis and the y axis is your a axis okay we define it like this okay so when we draw its diagrams we draw it like this in a simplified way when i draw i am going to draw it like this so i am going to name it this is my b this is c and this is a i hope this is understandable to everyone okay so this is the problem with the online so that i am the only one speaking here okay so here this is the relation now the another thing you should know that here all axes are perpendicular to each other okay if each unit cell we are taking here a b c so we from here we can say we can have a relationship of the length of these axes as well as their angle between them so they can be perpendicular they can be perpendicular to each other they can be equal to each other they cannot equal to each other some of them can be equal this many combinations are possible so they can be perpendicular they cannot be perpendicular so based on the relationship of them a b and c based on the relationship between a b and c here relationship i mean to say that the length of a b c and the relationship angle between them okay we have different chemical uh, crystal structures okay we have having a seven crystal systems based on this we are having a seven crystal systems <coughs> sorry the first one here is cubic system it is also known as isometric system there is a another name for it isometric system the second one is your tetragonal system okay then we are having a hexagonal okay so tetragonal hexagonal how many total we are having we are having seven crystal systems cubic system tetragonal hexagonal trigonal orthorhombic monoclinic triclinic okay trigonal orthorhombic then the sixth one is your monoclinic and seventh one is your try clinic these are the seven crystal systems which exist in nature okay now <coughs> these there are seven crystal systems but when we talk about their families only six crystal families exist okay why because trig this trigonal and hexagonal hexagonal is having six sides and trigonal trigonal is having three faces okay so trigonal is also considered as a part of hexagonal so when we talk talk about families this is crystal systems then we talk about families we are only having six families 
okay we are not going to have trigonal okay so isometric tetragonal hexagonal orthorhombic monoclinic triclinic okay remove trigonal from that why because trigonal is considered as a part of a hexagonal when i will be teaching your crystal system there you will see that when i am teaching going to teach you trigonal okay then i will be taking unit cell of uh, hexagonal and from that i will be dividing showing you which is a trigonal portion i will be explaining that from that diagrams only okay so trigonal is considered as a part of a uh, hexagonal so it is not considered as a different family so families we are having only six cubic tetragonal hexagonal orthorhombic monoclinic and triclinic so these are the six families which exist okay so i hope you guys have enjoyed my lecture and understood everything okay so in the next session i will be talking about them in details and then we will talk about brevis lattice arrangements also okay so i hope you guys have enjoyed so those who have liked our lecture and enjoyed please do subscribe our channel and do support us for any kind of a query you guys can get in touch okay and the number will be provided and our new batch starts every monday i hope best of luck for your future examinations and preparations for any kind of a doubt and query kindly get in touch thank you guys